Man, oh man. Did y'all see the fight? Did y'all see the fight last night between Tanks Davis and Frank Martin? Did you see that stop? Forget the, the KO. Did you guys see the actual fight? Because that was something to behold, man. It was a very, very good fight. And I want you guys, before I get into it, make sure you go to the YouTube channel, like, subscribe, click the notification bell, and all the other good jazz. But just look at the fight and see how competitive it was for, I would say, seven out of the eight rounds. The eighth round, Tank got on his ass. Pause. But the other seven rounds... Man, that was a hell of a fight. And not only that, but we had some really good fights from the undercard. So let's start out with, I didn't even get to see the, the fight between Gary Russell Jr. and his opponent, opponent, which I need to look at. But I heard that was a banger. And then you had David Benavidez Jr. versus Alexander Fostick in the co-main event, if you will, before the Tank Davis and Martin fight. And that was a really good fight. I talked about that in my prediction video. I talked about how... I thought Benavidez would win, but it would be a very tough fight because even though he doesn't have the legs that he had four years ago, his legs still look good in terms of him moving from spot to spot, and he still has the hand speed. He has the technical prowess. He has the the uh, ability to land his jab at will for the most part. It was going to be a tough fight, and truth be told, I mean, look, Benavidez won that fight in my opinion, but I thought he won the fight seven to five. And if Vazdik didn't give a round or two away earlier on, he could have won that fight. I, I'm very familiar with Ale Alexander Vazdik from his fight with Better BF. He was beating Better BF, and Better BF is just such a monster. He was able to take the punishment and be able to stop Vazdik later on. But make no mistake about it, Vazdik was schooling better be of in spots with his boxing ability the same thing happened with Caleb Plant versus Benavidez Benavidez and everybody else knew that Caleb Plant would gas out and he just waited him out until the later part of the fight and then he was able to take control and win the fight he wasn't able to do that against Bostic one if you look at the fight look at the weigh-in and then look at fight night and see how much heavier Bostic was Weight wise, he looked. He he made. This this was the first time I've seen David Benavidez look small compared to his opponent in the ring, and the seventh, eighth, ninth round rallies that he's so famously known for, they didn't even affect him. There were so there were some punches in that fight, many punches where he landed a hook or a jab or a cross flush on the jaw of Vostick and not only did it not affect him but it, he damn near didn't even move his head that much which just goes back to the point of how much weight plays a role in how a fight will play out so that was that fight it played out the way I thought it would but um, he, he definitely had to reconsider whether he wants to fight at 175 because if you're struggling that way against Vostick who is not the fighter he once was, but still a problem. You're going to really struggle against Better BF and especially Dimitri Bivol. Dimitri Bivol is doing everything that Vostick is doing, but he's a younger, he, he, he still has the legs. So if you were struggling against Vostick, Bivol's going to kill you. You, you're not even, you might not even touch him. He, he might stop you. That being said, this was his first fight at 175. He's going to take a little bit of time to get acclimated because, you know, it's, it's his first fight there. And you fought, you didn't get a touch-up. You got you got a former champion who is not faded, or at least not faded to the point that everybody thought he was. I was looking at some of the highlights of his last fight. It might have been from, it was from fall 2023. And Va Vazdik, in his third fight back in his return in the fall of 2023, he looked sharp, man. He looked sharp. So you knew what you were getting. It, it shouldn't have been a surprise to those that are in the know. But take it that what you will. That was my thoughts on that fight. It played out the way I thought it would. But it was a very good test for Benavidez. And hopefully he's able to take a step back, reevaluate, you know, what he did in that fight. But she gave himself a C-level performance. And go back to the drawing board and fix the things that he needs to fix. If anything, he needs to put on, I'd say, 10 to 20 pounds of muscle over the next 6 to 8 months. So he's able to be able to... Um, 
take the shots and dish out punishment better than he was in this fight. It, it's it's just a time thing. There's there's just no way he was going to be prepared to be able to deal with high level killers at this weight. But he did good for his first fight and he was able to get through it. So kudos to him. Salute to both guys for a great fight. And then on to the main event, looking at Frank Martin and then Tank Davis. This fight also played out not exactly the way I thought it would, but similarly. Because I my my thing was if you go back and look at my prediction video, he was dehydrated going into that fight. He he really he looked drained. You could see his eyeballs popping out of his socket and you could see the bone on his cheekbones protruding out because he was so dehydrated. So my big concern was that even if you rehydrate ten let's say even 20 pounds, you can't necessarily rehydrate the fluid. Um, you can't rehydrate in time within 24 hours to be able to replace the water within the cerebrospinal fluid in your brain, which is going to affect your punch resistance. So that was my big concern going into the fight, along with him just being a dead man walking. Yeah, you can put the water weight back on, but if you if you're walking a, a tightrope, a fine line, if you dehydrate too far, it won't matter if you're able to rehydrate. Your body will just be so physically taxed from having to cut the weight that you won't be able to bounce back in that 24-hour period. So that was the main concern. But from the opening bell, that didn't seem to be a problem at all. The first sign was that his feet were there. He was jumping, doop, 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 left, right, and Tank couldn't even fucking find him. That let me know that he wasn't as dehydrated as I originally feared. And the fact that he was doing that in the fifth and sixth rounds, that just further, well, not even a fifth or sixth, but I would say even the third or the fourth round, the fact that he was still had the foot movement at that point let me know that this isn't temporary. You didn't burn through your reserves from being dehydrated. No, you weren't, you were hydrated enough that you were going to be able to go, let's say, six to ten rounds at high intensity, which is what I would assume you would expect out of a high-level fighter. You're not going to fight all 12 rounds at high intensity, but if you can give yourself a good, uh, let's say, even eight rounds of high intensity, you might take two rounds off, right? Two rounds off where you're just chilling and just trying to make sure that you don't get clipped with nothing crazy and not trying to punch yourself out. But if you can give give me eight solid rounds of high intensity, two rounds that you take off, and then another two rounds where you're just cruising, like you're not you're not um going all out, but you're not sitting back doing nothing. You're just pot shot and moving around, pot shot, moving around, throw a combination here or there. If you can do that, then you're in good shape. And he was able to do that. So that that quelled my concerns and I was actually surprised. That he was able to bounce back that quickly, you know, I was wrong, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take that. But it was really a great fight. He was using his foot movement. Two things that I was very impressed with that I noted in my pre-fight analysis. One was that instead of moving straight forward and and back, um, moving forward and back on a straight line, he was actually implementing more lateral movement than he usually does. He'll implement it, but not to the extent that he was. He is it's almost like they made it a point to um, have that lateral movement against a guy like Tank. And he was really effective with it. He was tagging him up. And I know people are like, yeah, you know, Tank's letting him do that. He's downloading the data. He's analyzing them. He's just figuring him out, him out and he'll give him four to six rounds as he figures them out. And then he'll turn it up, which he did. But here's the thing, Frank Martin, his his big mistake was that he started laying on the ropes. And I don't know if he was tired. I don't think he was. I think what he said in his uh, his uh, post-fight press conference or interview is that he was looking for the big shot. And he went on the ropes because he was trying to bait him into overexerting himself and throwing a big shot and leaving himself open. So he could counter with something really nasty. And I think that... I think the best explanation for that is greed. I'll I'll say that again. The ex the best explanation for why he diverted away from the game plan that his corner was telling him to stick to in the corner is because he got greedy. And that's just that's human nature. Especially when you know you have somebody dangerous, you want to do everything within your power to really 
get them the F up out of there. And that was what he thought was best in the moment. Was he right? No, he was wrong. He paid for it. But that being said, he was doing a very great job in that fight. And he, unlike Leo Santa Cruz, he had the power and the speed and the stamina to continue that for 12 rounds. And I don't really know why he stopped. Kalen Plant, he couldn't do that for 12 rounds against Benavidez. Frank Martin, he could do that for 12 rounds against Tank Davis. Um, Leo Santa Cruz couldn't do that for 12 rounds against Tank Davis because, because Tank Davis knew, okay, yeah, you're hitting me with stuff, but it's not hurting me. And I'll just take a shot to land one once I figure out exactly what you're doing. Maybe that takes six rounds or eight rounds, but once I figure it out, yeah, I'll take that straight right if that's what's been your bread and butter just to land my own shot that I see an opening for. And he did, did the same thing with Frank Martin. The only difference is, and people are going to be like, oh, look, give Tank his credit. He went out there, he was patient, he took a lot of punishment early on. He was getting tagged the F up by Frank Martin, more than I've ever seen anybody do to him. He was moving off the line, Frank Martin was, spinning him around, hitting with shot, hitting him with shots that he did not see coming, and he was able to, to eat him. And you have to give him respect for that, but that's not a good long-term strategy. It's not going to serve him well against God. This is the first step up in competition that Tank has really had in his entire career, if you really think about it. Ryan Garcia, who had he fought like prior to fighting Tank Davis? Outside of all the hype behind him, who did he really fight before fighting Tank Davis? Of note, not anybody really. Frank Martin is really the first high caliber opponent that Tank Davis has had in recent memory. And you look at other guys, even an older Lomachenko, you put Lomachenko in that ring, if Frank Martin was able to land those shots, those same shots that Frank Martin was landing, if Shakur Stevenson or Lomachenko land those shots, you might not get a chance to, to get your get back in the eighth round because you might already be in the locker room by then. I think that's what people have to really keep in mind as they think about this fight and evaluate it and... and you know, you know, process everything that happened from round to round. Frank Martin, in my opinion, he was winning the fight. Tank Davis was trying to find an opening. And mind you, he landed the combination that him and Coach Calvin were practicing in the locker room. And side note, I was looking at the combination. I was like, man, that shit is wicked, man. Not just the combination so much, but the footwork that was combined with it. You know, I... You throw, you throw the first punch and then you step off the line and then you throw a hook and then uppercut. My bad. You throw a hook, uppercut, bam. And it's really the footwork that went along with it that was most impressive to me. And even with that, to even get to that point where you find that opening, I don't know if he gets there if he's facing Lomachenko or Shakur because some of the shots he was getting hit with Shakur going to keep you on the end of that jab and those long arms, and you're not even going to get a chance to get inside. It's Like Frank said, if you come in reckless, you're going to have to pay. And Frank made him pay at times, but I think Frank got cute. And Tank kept doing what Tank does, and if you're going to get cute, Tank's going to make you pay the price. And he had to pay the toll for trying to get cute, laying on the ropes looking for a bigger shot instead of continuing to move his feet, move off the center line, uh, have good lateral movement and tag him up with the jab along with combination punching. Like, why would you divert away from, from what was working for you? You didn't look gassed. That would be the first reason why you stopped moving, but you didn't really look gassed, unless I'm wrong. You know, Frank Martin or anybody else can correct me if, if I'm wrong on that. Secondly, if you're landing clean shots, why would you get away from good lateral movement? Why would you not keep changing angles, using those angles, and punishing your opponent until they quit. Third part, why would you go to the ropes and get somebody who's a power puncher, who is a precision puncher, and somebody who is not like a Neanderthal? Like he's literally taking time to try to break down what you like to do so that he can negate it and try to land a big shot he's not trying to land pity pat shots and combinations yeah he wants to land combinations but he's really looking to land hurtful shots if he throws a three punch combination one of those punches might be a pitter patter shot but the other two or three 
are going to be power shots. Like he's looking to finish you, which is what you should do as a boxer. So, look, kudos to Tank. Kudos to Frank for putting on a great show. They both went in there, regardless of all the talk beforehand, they went in there looking to get the knockout. And uh, Tank Davis, he did his job. Congratulations. Excellent victory. Excellent knockout. Excellent stoppage. And way to show patience in the middle of the fire. Not getting shaken up or getting knocked off your square. Getting in there and doing exactly what you said you were going to do and what you've done time and time again. Even as you step up in competition against a better opponent in Frank Martin, you still kept the same mindset and the still same strategy. Or not necessarily the same strategy, but the same conviction in the things that you're doing. You, you tweak some things here and there uh, based off what you see as a weakness in the opponent, but you still have to stay true to yourself. And he's been able to do that. And then looking at Frank Martin, going in there and saying, I don't care who he is, at the wing. He said, you know, after he's tell, telling... He, uh, Javante Davis is telling him, hey, look at your eyes. Ah, you drain. I'm going to F you up. That's what he said when they were facing off. That jibber-jabber, if you lip sync, if you read the lips, that's what he was saying. He said, ah, you're drained. I'm going to F you up. And Frank, his response was like, and paraphrasing, I don't care. I'm good. I'm going to get in there, and you're going to see exactly what time it is. You just wait. And he, he was right. He got in there. He was healthy. And he was effing Tank up for the first part of the fight. And then Tank was able to make the adjustment. So I give both guys kudos. Um, and, and honestly, like I said in my prediction video, give Frank Martin one or two fights against a higher level opponent so he can get a little more experience. And then if the fight didn't happen, then I would make the tank fight. Or since the fight happened, now make the fight after he gets one or two um, tune-up fights. And then I think that will be the requisite experience that he needs to be able to compete against a guy on Tank Davis's level and have a better chance of winning. He'll more so having the focus across twelve rounds. And me and my boy, me and my brother X and, and, and Craig were talking about this. Can you have the discipline over 12 rounds not two not three not four not 10 not 11 rounds 12 rounds all 12 rounds all 36 minutes of that fight can you have that laser focus and that's hard for any fighter even tank davis he had he had mental lapses and he paid for it. he just he just has a hell of a chin he was able to work his way through it but that's very difficult for a fighter to do so the, this experience, along along with some tune-up fights, I think will help him be able to lock in and be confident in his game plan. Because if he was confident in his game plan, he wouldn't have went to the ropes. If you if you still had gas left in the tank and you were confident in what you were doing in that fight and you were doing very well, you wouldn't have gone to the ropes. You would have used the ropes as maybe a, a way to, you know, here and there, but you wouldn't have leaned on the ropes as a strategy, it's, it's, it's not the way to go. The only person that's really ever got away with that is Muhammad Ali. And even after that fight against George Foreman, is either the Foreman fight or the Frazier fight or both, he was hurt. Possibly, I know he was pissing blood after the uh, Thriller in Manila versus uh, Joe Frazier, but he definitely took a lot of punishment versus George Foreman, even though he won that fight. His body had he he maybe he was pissing blood after that fight and just never said it. I don't know, but that's that's typically not what you want to do ever in a boxing ring. Muhammad Ali is the, one of the few people that's ever survived, especially against a killer, and got to win the fight. Like that's just not the strategy you want to take. So, I think if he had more confidence, he would have had a plan B and C that didn't involve going to the ropes. So, if Frank Martin, if you're seeing his video. Um, you lost the fight, but great job. Um, it happens. Everybody, you know, sometimes you get knocked out in the fight, but you have the skill. You just have to make some minor adjustments to um, compete and win against guys like Tank Davis and some of the other guys in the division. So get back in the lab. You know, take time off. Get, get your mind right. You know, go on vacation. You know, enjoy yourself. Enjoy life. And then get back into the gym and make those small adjustments across the board. And I think you're right there, man. Um, that's just my objective perspective. Some people are going to be like, ha ha, you got knocked out. Oh, he's a bum. Da, 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 da. He's right there. 
Take your time. Don't rush back into the ring. Get your mind right. Get your body right. And get yourself back into it kind of like Anthony Joshua did. Take your time and build yourself back up. And now Anthony Joshua, in my opinion, he's the, the, the number one contender to fight Usyk at this point. Whereas two years ago, people had written him off. Say he was done. He's too soft. He don't have the mentality. He can't lock in. Blah, blah, freaking blah. And I would give the same advice to Tank, uh, Frank Martin. Same thing. Look at Ryan Garcia. One of uh, Tank Davis's opponents two or three fights ago. Stop uh, Ryan Garcia with a body shot. One part of that is because he was dehydrated because he agreed to that rehydration clause. And another part of it was because he just never dealt with that before. And he took that. And he learned from it, and he grew. He grew from it. Now, we, it, the situation is not looking good in terms of the Osterine situation and whatnot. But that being put aside, let's 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 say in in a perfect world, he didn't take those things allegedly, supposedly. His strategy was still so much better going into that fight against Devin Haney than he had in previous fights, and I think that Oscar Duarte fight. In the interim, prepared him for that fight against Devin Haney. And that's the same advice I'm giving to Frank Martin. Get a fight against a an opponent that is good enough to test you, but not necessarily good enough to really send you to the shadow realm. So you can get a taste of what the fire feels like while being able to walk through that crucible and, and, you know, with, without too much damage. And then get ready for a fight against a real killer. And now you have the mindset, the experience, and the know-how to deal with that person. So that's my advice for Frank Martin. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And uh, look, it was an impressive night of fights. And hopefully we see more of them. I'll catch you on the next one.